things and there are a lot of other interesting things happening in that time frame when so, so quote unquote um, um, web 3.0 started or semantic web started for that matter uh, again the term semantic web was coined in 1999 in, and then people got really uh, started to gain attention in year 2000 and then more and more and more with uh, in the first five years of semantic web, a lot of things was about uh, you know diamond plus oil or owl. A lot of things were about description logic. Frankly, very minuscule number of people use that. Considering the number of people involved in the web as a consumer or a developer or user, uh, or, 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 you know, the number of people who use that part of semantic web was uh, minuscule. So then you can't really talk about um, really that as a primary uh, way of defining web 3.0. So if I want to start saying, well, how did post, uh, after the attention to user generated content, you know, uh, moved on, what happened? And yes, uh, we, we got, one interesting thing was that we got ways to associate meaning with the data. And that is the core of the semantic web. But a lot of other things happened also. Uh, after um, the grow, huge growth of user generated content, we started to get massive growth in other types of content. Uh, that includes things called sensors or internet in, or sensors that talk on internet called internet of things and that uh, you know um, with that growth and that include a uh, huge growth in another thing that happened in um, sort of that you can say is part an artifact <coughs> of web 3.0 is this huge growth in video so netflix for example again is one is a company that is about web 3.0 in a way right you, um, it just as uh, MySpace or Facebook or Twitter characterize Web 2.0 uh, or exemplify Web 2.0, Netflix uh, exemplifies Web 3.0, right? And so the uh, people started to think about data of wide variety. In, in variety of data can be used in solving a problem as part of an application. One, one term is physical cyber social. Physical data, inter, uh, sensor data, inter of things, cyber data, everything on the web, and social data. Also, uh, there was huge growth in both. Um, uh, there, there continued to be growth in unstructured data, as in user generated content, but a la, uh, uh, suddenly a big growth of data, structured data on the web. For example, linked open data, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, where uh, people put on put in structured data, typically R RDF data in Sparkle endpoint, you will again uh, study about that, and that large amount of growth of um, uh, uh, databases got put into the web, you know, and semantic web form, web or web of data form onto the web. Again, these are uh, another, this is another important uh, uh, aspect of web 3.0. Right? But so can we say that the way, the, what is changing in web 3.0 is the way the user consume the data? Or no? Well, that no, that's a continuum that keeps on changing. Maybe the heterogeneity yeah. of the, the data, the actual form of the data, because we have them a form. The heterogeneity of continues to increase. I mean, it's like um, uh, what is this uh, concept of uh, entropy? Mm -hmm. You know, it always increases, and the, you know, uh, in, in in the data context, uh, heterogeneity, variety of data keeps on happening. Another simple way to characterize. Um, what happened or what has happened in Web 3.0, not at the very early part of Web 3.0, but kind of just a little bit way into the Web 3.0, is the emergence of this big data. Right. Because by the time Web 3.0, you can start characterizing Web 3.0 as in post year 2000. Uh, but remember, in that sense, um, Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, if you look at it, might have, in a way, coexisted if you define it that way. So that's an issue, right? One way, if you go by time, and if you say that Web 2.0 started in um, 2003 time frame, I would say Web 3.0 started post-2008. Okay? And then what happened in those days is this sort of, you know, uh, cloud computing had already taken place, and then, uh, you know, this images of big data happened, meaning people could conceive of applications that would have high volume of data, high velocity. variety of user data, velocity of the data, and such. So that also can be criticized. Now, people did not talk about web big data in the context of web 
a two point order for that matter because the variety wasn't being talked about as much. There was some, but not as much, right? Yes. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. So, in this sense, can we can you differentiate web semantic web and web three O? Yeah, that, and I try to do that. So, uh, you know, uh, semantic web um, uh, is an aspect of uh, you know uh, is mainly deals with associating meaning with the data, labeling the data so that it becomes more meaningful, uh, both to machines and to humans, right? And um, some people, for example. In early days of uh, semantic web, only talked about uh, making data more meaningful to machines. Machine readable data was what was being talked about earlier in the you know semantic web world. But people now understand that really making the sense of data uh, for humans is uh, as important, if not more important. Thing. So, um, if you think about let's if you are let's if you argue that we are now in web um, uh, 3.0, then we are not limited to semantic web. We are we have so-called semantic computing and semantic web, but we also have so-called cognitive computing. And we also have so-called perceptual computing, which, you know, uh, 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 noise is, uh, we are um, again, in a way, uh, taking this leadership in, uh, um, we did not take particularly a leadership in um, uh, cognitive computing, uh, others have talked about it before it, but we are the one who defined uh, in traditional term in the web context, in this general uh, you know computing context, the perceptual computing term. And we have defined, we've written a paper uh, that is still in the process, um, not published yet, talked about semantic computing, cognitive computing, and perceptual computing. Right? And then in later in my class, I know one of the talks, I will discuss what these are and. I will read, read, read that paper, I'll give a talk and we'll, we'll study that more. Right? No question. The way the discussion has went, it's like web 1.0, where few people have a excess of data in their generation, like web administrator and people. No, think. not few people have access to data. See, the beauty uh, of web was once the data is on the web, anybody can access it. It's no. uh, your browser, your URL, you've got access, access to generate the data. Really? Oh, okay, all right. So, so the next hmm. next 2.0 is uh, not only these people the user generated uh, content has taken place and other than these people started generating the data and 3.0 not only people I mean human beings sensor has started <coughs> generating the data that is so, true yes good point hmm. so uh, I would can I say it like the generation and processing of data like probably in 3.0, sensor data might not be processed as it is processed in 3.0. So generation and processing of data that keeps on changing in every version of web. That is, I think, I think you you characterize this very well. One thread, okay, by which I would distinguish. Uh, you can distinguish. So in that sense, it is good. It's not only that, but yeah. I think that's a good one. You know, uh, canonic, canonical way of thinking about. Yes, and you should think about two. Three, four of those kind of stuff to okay. make the distinction. So my next question is, what is going to be 4.0? So what happens typically here is that um, um, something happens which allows people to crystallize that this is different than before. And very often, we might even um, recognize that after that has happened. So it's not necessary that I can, it may not be possible that I or anybody can define what would be web 4.0. Uh, I can try, I am certainly willing to try and I will give you a partial answer. But um, sometimes you have to wait until it starts happening because sometimes we have ideas which may be very um, advanced um, yet it takes incredibly longer time than we imagine. Mm -hmm. Just today. Uh, I, you know, I read, uh, I heard while driving, you know, NPR, uh, you know, thing on uh, cognitive robotics, mm -hmm. and and robotics basically, um, robots that are becoming, some claim might become smarter than humans, right? And 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 you know, um, if I go back. 20 years ago, people were talking uh, uh, that robots will take over the world, I mean, or robots will be more advanced, uh, in, you know, will do XYZ. 
in five years or ten years, it didn't happen. But then suddenly huge, if you look at last one or two or three years, the growth in robotics and uh, humanoids mm -hmm. is amazing. So we thought, you know, people talked about, uh, you know, uh, advancement in robotics 20 years ago, expecting that a lot, you know, a lot of things would happen in five to ten years and things could not happen. And suddenly, uh, you know, people figure out and growth happens. This is you know very well known example that we all talk about the neural network, um, and that uh, you know the basics of that were known uh, twenty plus years ago, but nothing was happened and not many people used it. All the things that we go behind deep learning, recurrent network, and other things, but suddenly in last two, three, four, five years, it has grown up because uh, people figure out machines have become powerful enough to make that advanced computational technique uh, practical, right? So it is not that the idea is not there, but growth. So the point is sometimes we don't want to name, suppose I can do, you know, some unique thing, but it is not on a scalable way, only a few people can do it, I can do it only in a demonstration case. I'm not sure I am allowed to give this moniker of, you know, yet, you know, web 4.0, a very major thing, right? So. I could say, uh, you know, but nevertheless, like if you ask me to um, uh, give my, you know, try at it, then I have used some term in the past. Um, I in two thousand eight, I used the term computing for human experience, okay? And uh, so, if I were to talk about a future web, whether it's four point or five point I can't tell you right away. But what is what seems to be happening lately, which is significant in my view is that we are not only able to think about data and information and delivering information, searching for it and giving it and browsing for it. We are thinking about, I have some, and we are already working on this intermediate thing I will call question answering. So I'm not asking for information, I'm asking questions and I'm, I want answers, I don't want data. I don't want blue links. I don't want table tables saying here is the data. I, maybe there is data. Uh, there is information in there, which is what you look for, ask for. I actually want a refined answer as a human would give. If I are to ask question, you will give me an answer um, in the form that is meaningful and useful to me, actionable perhaps. So that is what has started to happen. Mm -hmm. As an example, question answering, and I can take it one step further, and I would say that it would be the web. But web is an infrastructure. So web as in technology has changed amazingly. We may still use the word web, but it is really not the web as in server and passing the information. Things have become far more um, yeah. it's uh, not you know, to web broad, you know. I mean machine talk to machine, machine yes. talk to human. Yes. You know, every you know, so there's a whole variety of things that are happening that was just not, you know, you could not have obviously thought about in 1990. But the fundamental change that's happening in a computing in a web becomes the most powerful infrastructure which connects. It keeps on morphing, right? The interesting thing about web yes. is that internet and the web on the top of internet, mm -hmm. it has become the uniform infrastructure for interaction, yes. not just communication, mm -hmm. right? Snapchat requires the web or internet and web and, uh, and many other things that WhatsApp requires it and uh, uh, YouTube requires it, right? So, yes, uh, so the next web that I am interested in is the focus on human, whereby the machine understands the human needs and serves up the hu uh, human need, not gives human data that human can process intellectually to do what he wants. That has been happening already. Uh, by good search and other things, but in the sense of something that is usable. So Google Now, if I start, you know, Google Now at five o'clock, it immediately comes up with, uh, you know, first thing it shows is the map of uh, office to home. Mm -hmm. It kind of knows that on that time, six o'clock, that I probably this is what I will be doing, uh, and, and shows the you know weather or something. And it, it, uh, in the context of um, 
it's a guess, a very educated guess, very you know uh, proven with you know based on the statistics that it has and the data it has. It also would know that if there's anything that relates to my trip, whether it's a news, whether it's a traffic accident, it will also start exposing that. And when I'm in a new um, uh, location, when I was visiting, uh, you know, in my sabbatical, let's say New Zealand and Australia and whatever, it will uh, in Singapore, it will it will show nearby popular places to visit. It kind of possibly had in my, from what I can tell, it had a, um, a, 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 a it had a notion that I am actually a visitor here. I don't belong to, you know, uh, Singapore. I'm there for some time uh, because it knows that I've been in US for long, much long time, right, longer mm -hmm. time. Uh, and I take a long trip mm -hmm. and that rather than focusing on some daily thing, it's focusing on attractions. So, uh, can we say it like we are moving up in the pyramid that uh, data, information, knowledge and wisdom? Absolutely, we are moving up and that again, if I were to say when the focus of web and the technology is all centered around serving human needs, I would call this is the next generation of web. There is four or five, I don't know. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. When it is not focused on solving the technical problem of making data available, when it's not focused on the fact that how do I process this big amount of data, mm -hmm. yeah, I got it's not focused on how do I combine these two data to get this. Yes. That is a technological the, thing. Yeah, it's just the last two layers, like the data and information. Knowledge and, you know. Yes, and we are now trying to get the information into knowledge and then a partial wisdom because, I mean, not exactly the wisdom human have. Right. Okay, got it. Thank you, Dr. So with adding semantic web, we're, we're, we're putting in a meaning and that basically allows future systems to leverage the meaning to develop understanding. Very good point. Absolutely. So again, if I uh, again, I, I I I'll talk about this later in a later class. It's rather advanced thing on this. What is the difference between semantic computing, cognitive computing, and perceptual computing? Right? But I'll, I'll give you one point, just to understand. Uh, my my most favorite example these days. If anybody asks, you know, tell so it's the same thing. Example. Our human brain, our human senses, watch and hear and all that is able to take in 11 million bits per second. That's somebody computed, right? You know, in, computed in terms of, you know, how much uh, image information we get in that, how many images we process in the set, you know, thing, and how, how much auditory thing we get. Meaning the amount of data that hits our senses, data, not information, not anything else, is 11, about 11 million bits per second. Our brain converts that into 150 bits per second. This is called human perception. We suddenly recognize, you know, somebody does a hand like this and suddenly recognize, you know, I, I should pay attention to that. And a lot of things that may be happening, your brain will ignore and just notice that. Right? A sudden move, potentially in attack. Can jumping on you. So um, that ability, starting with that data, 11 million bits per second, to an actionable information that you 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 are acting upon. You are making a decision that something is interesting, important, relevant to me, relevant to my context, and then acting upon that is that small. If I were to say something else is that, another way, is that you are hearing a lot of words right now. That everybody is speaking, I am speaking, you are listening to a lot of things, you are watching a lot of things, you are looking at my hands moving. And yet, if you are asked to summarize, you will be able to summarize that in a few words. How many bytes does it take? Very few bytes. So that you distill all that data into a few bytes. As perception, so powerful, right? This is what where we need to go to. This is not what we can we do today, but that's where the kind of thing we are working on in, in a research in our, our, our center. Our you know, um, you know, some of the some of the students we are looking at that. Right? So Sunjay has a task of uh, processing 
massive amounts of uh, sequencing, genome sequencing data and uh, patient data and convert into information whether the patient, uh, in this case the patient, the data is all related to um, you know, uh, blood uh, uh, of a patient uh, who <coughs> is suspecting of some GI problem, possibly esophageal cancer and he is, you know, trusted, uh, you know, his research potentially is about converting them to say, given this blood, yes, he had, uh, there is a high chance he has uh, cancer of this stage or no, it is, is quite fine without doing biopsy. It's just a form, uh, it's just different way of, uh, you know, different application of what we are talking about here. It involves this thing about semantics, it involves what we call cognition, understanding and perception, creating, going from low level data to high level abstraction that is actually yeah. Okay, so we'll uh, take a break now and we'll switch the gear and we'll get very hands-on, very basic in some sense, but it's very powerful, right? So earlier, you know, we noted that uh, the most powerful representational framework we have today is graph-centric. And the one that has been standardized by the World Bank Consortium for the, the, which is called to be the basic standard for semantic web is RDF. And there is a query language for Sparkle, uh, for that called Sparkle. And there's this schema RDF schema, and uh, I posted the video. So you are supposed to have read, you know, watch the video. Is there anyone here who has not watched those two videos? Why not? Because I was reading about the schema that um, the tutorial that he posted. That's what I read. Okay. I love watching the video. But here's a challenge, right? This in this class, you have to find time. Yeah. It's not. You, you're watching that fine, but I think everybody probably else did that too. Mm. You still have to find that extra time to do this other thing. So now what would happen is that you'll do the thing in the class, you would fall behind. Okay. okay? Alright, so I turn over to Vin. The reason I turn over to Vin is that, frankly speaking, she would she's more of an expert in what we are going to do than I. I can't I'm not able to keep up with every syntax and other things hands-on because I'm not doing as much hands-on programming, or not doing any for that matter. So, and she not only um, uh, uh, knows the basics, but she also is doing her core research in that area of developing very high performance, um, you know, um, engine for a new formal model for RDF, right? So, um, she has deep knowledge of those things. And so, what we want to do, as you know, is that you guys are supposed to read um, you have to do more, we are ambitious, you want to cover more in the class, right? I could do one thing in a class and, you know, I, what I present, I could probably drag it out to eight classes if I want to. But, um, so she is going, you know, you have watched the video, we are assuming that she is going to give you an exercise right now. And you are going to, please bring paper, pencil or whatever you are going to need, uh, you are going to try and do that exercise here, right? And uh, ask the questions. This is here, we have a board, or she can project it, uh, everything. And then, towards the end, she's going to give you the assignment. Read the assignment and ask the questions you have. You want to correct? Yeah. Ask the questions you have, just to make sure that you really understand her. And then, um, uh, uh, well, uh, and then do the assignments. Uh, tomorrow, she will give you an hour of time uh, as an office hour. If you want to ask further questions or clarification, right now you are able to. You will, uh, you know, once you define the exercise, you are, you know, you can ask each other or you can ask her if you are, you know, stuck anywhere. When you do assignment, you are on your own. Meaning you can't ask or take any help. You can look up where, no problem. Okay, but everything should be done by you. It's not a closed book. It's an open book assignment. You can do that. But you have to do on your own. Right? Exercise. Ask anyone if they are willing to help you. They will help you. If not, ask somebody else. Okay? All right. Uh, while she does that, one more uh, as an announcement. Um, so um, all of you should have uh, a web page, Google Doc, called um, uh, 
Web 3.0, fall 2015, Web 3.0, uh, in your name. And give that uh, URL to Shayans. You will put on uh, one page where it will link to each of them. So we can, on that page, you are going to post your assignment results. Right? So when the semester is, you just put up there. This will be there in public, but you, I am expecting that you will not look anybody else's assignment until after you have submitted yours. If you look at anybody else's assignment results, you cannot change yours. Okay, so that's something. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so after you watch the video, you will have your questions to ask, like. Is there anything that is unclear to you? Yeah. I have a question. This is related to the first video where you are talking about. Uh, RDF. Yeah, RDF. But this was more like WSU announces Web 2.0 mm -hmm. and start by Top oh. So that is a statement which says. WSU assign announces Web 3.0 and Web 3.0 is started by Dr. Shet. Uh, the approach you have taken is uh, you have taken the object, a start by, and then you have made a couple of triplets. Hmm. I wanted to know so can I do it like WSU announces Web 3.0 and Web 3.0 is started by Dr. Shet. What is the difference between the, these two? Um, you last one. This one, right? Yes. So, your question is. So, if you look at this sentence, what is the main clause here? So, it starts with saying the next step announced that, right? So, announced that is, right there is going to be the subject and announce is going to be the book. And it say announced that web free for no course is taught by. So, the, the, the one starting with the green is like another sentence. Mm -hmm. So, if you see that the right set announced, the web 3.0 course mm -hmm. that is touched by data mm -hmm. So in that case, you you split it into two separate mm -hmm. like uh, triples. Mm -hmm. The first one is the right side announce the course. Mm -hmm. So that's the first triple. The second triple is like uh, the web trigger is taught by data mm -hmm. If I take the course as web 3.0, right? Right state announce web 3.0. Mm. Web 3.0 taught by Dr. Shet. So, what if, like this semester, it may be taught by Dr. Shet? If in the next semester, it will be taught by Dr. Brissett, for mm -hmm. example, right? Mm -hmm. So, in that case, you see that, like, um, if you if you represent it in the graph, you see the difference. In that well, case, like, it is an. So let's say uh, this is a right step announce that web 3.0, right? And uh, in this case, it says that web 3.0 is taught by. event if then if this is taught by is taught by maybe like so in both cases we can capture them in the area but it just like what is the meaning of that right so if you, if you, the first one, it says that 
announced that this course is taught by Dr. Shen. It doesn't say that it's another course. Do you see the difference, right? Yes. So it announced, it is a statement. Okay. Yeah. But suppose if we have add other triplet which take care of the time. Yes. So in that case, like the 3.0 is offered in spring fall 2015. Yes. If we do that, and then again in like for 2016, Dr. Saad is offering the course. How how different that that two are making? So this is supposed to be the exercise that I'm giving, <laughs> but like different. But 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 that is a good question. So the question is like um, if we don't have the camera information associated with the sentence, right? Let's say when we announce the course without saying the time. So in this case, say that the, the course is taught by Dr. Shen. And another time, like right, they announce that the course is taught by Dr. Prasad. So in that case, like uh, if somebody want to ask, like, so what is the, uh, like, um, is who is teaching this course, right? So if you don't have the table information, is how do you decide? How do you give the answer if somebody asks like that? So that so because of that, uh, in the in the hands-on example, I give a couple of um, example like how do we represent the table information of the statement. That needs a little bit more explanation. So so let's. Say, so so it's here, right? Is is here? So this is one approach that you can reify a statement. So when you say that, uh, like, um, uh. Question, a yeah, my question is more on the further approach, the next approach that you took. The next approach? Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a question about this approach? Yes. Oh, okay. So instead of this, I have the whole paper to explain. Um, So I will give you like uh, let's say that uh, to simplify that um, to simplify that example, I would say that uh, the web 3.0 is taught by Dr. Shen in the fall of 2014, and web 3.0 is taught by Dr. Prasad in the fall of like 2015. That example, right? Web 3.0. So the basic of that approach, the basic idea of that singleton property approach is that every relationship is unique. So here you see that the web tribunal has some kind of relationship with Amitship and it has another relationship with Dr. Prasad, right? So, and the difference between the two relationships, let's say, The, um, the main difference between the two relationships is like, like when does it happen? One is happening in the fall 2014 and the other one is happening in the 2015. Here that that different kind of uh, relationship, like different kind of um, um, representation. It's like, um, it's not only taught by them, but 
maybe the colors, the slide, like everything within that course may be different as well. So even though it says like the same name, but it so this is taught by like each professor may have like different style of teaching, for example, right? So because of that, like when, when it says the course taught by like a professor, it like uh, the so the relationship the two relationship the pitch relationship is different. So if you represent it in this way, say that it's taught by uh like you if you ignore this, you will see that the two relationship not different. Yeah. It is it's taught by. So because of that, it doesn't characterize what is different in this relationship and that relationship, right? And so they are different, but they also share the same kind of relationship in major, that is the teaching. So because of that, like, actually there are five approaches, four approaches, in order to represent this kind of thing in that year. So um, can you show us the like? So in the so the first thing is uh, like this is SP stands for singleton property, right? So because we say that every relationship is unique, mm -hmm. so why don't we represent it as a unique property mm -hmm. that can represent that relationship, right? So in that case, I would say that relationship one and relationship two. I name it and make it uh, universally unique in the scope of the data set or even the, in the web. So in that case, we say that web approval is taught by one and it's shared and taught by two to keep the set. And the differences between the two relationships can be attached into this into two properties. So in that case, I would say that this is uh, 15 and and this is like 14. And not only that, like all kind of like all kind of triples that distinguish the two relationships can be attached into these two properties. So that is the basic idea of the single property. semantics it can characterize this like very well it's just like he intuitively that's how we can perceive it so any questions about this approach uh, actually yes I mean yeah. so do, you, do you consider is doubt by one as an instance of a property mm. or as a property itself like uh, RDF property or a type RDF property so for instance, are you instantiating a property as you instantiate a class and then you declare the, the instance as a singleton of that property to establish this kind of relation? So you have basically an individual that you can point to other properties yeah. to specify the property. So in this, right, you can say that um, to answer the questions, I would say like I would create a new kind of property in the RDF schema. And I call it like singleton property R. Okay. Mm. Because when we say RDF, RDF type, right? It is, um, and this is this instance of a class. But I don't want to uh, characterize it as a class instance because the nature of that it is a relationship. So because of that, I keep it as a property. I don't need, I don't know I, I don't understand why you have to extend the this schema for doing that for doing that. Because uh, there is no uh there is no uh URI in the vocabulary to capture that kind of semantic. You mean the RDF type goes to class to from instance to class only? So when we say like the RDF type, the meaning of that is to connect one instance to the set of instance. Yes. But as it's going, it, it has no domain range constraints. Uh, so does. I don't remember. But this is more into the uh, the area best. Right. I think like in the next right. class, like uh, we discuss more 
if you if you are interested in, in this and in, you may watch the video and in the class I can I can explain to you like the extended semantic. It is not there in the formal semantic of the W three C, but that is some that is something that I extended in the paper. So, so the uh, the previous approach, the idea of replication, that like this approach. So this is called replication, and uh, it was included in the W three C recommendation in two thousand four, but recently last year they removed it from the formal semantics, because uh, even though here you see that it is very intuitive, right? Create one instance and point to the subject, click in an object, but but what defined it is a statement is not there in the in the form of semantics. So because of that, like different people may interpret it in a very different way. So that is not what we want. So what I'm proposing here is how do we add, how do we expand the current semantics to include the unique relationship here? I have another yeah. question. Like going back to the problem statement, mm. how we can think like I should so this this has to be the possible answer for that. Like is taught by is my um, uh, object that is uh, that is going to play the vital role instead of like doing another sort of triples that is or or this approach. So you uh, I I wanted to like. Solution it was WSU. Yeah. And now says uh, is taught by. Mm -hmm. And then you have to. Oh, uh, yes. Three point o is taught by Dr. S. Okay. Yes. But if I do WSU and now says web 3.0 and web 3.0 is taught by Dr. Chef. Uh, just because of the temporal, uh, the timing element, this is not going to stand valid in time. Is that so? It's going to change, yes. So if, because if, if we do this approach, this is then we do not have to change, uh, we just have to add another triples. Yeah. Then we do not have to change the So, so here, you say one, then yeah. this is one. So the next time if you have another an announcement, just like, it's going to be the new relationship to be established. Okay. If we take this approach, in and when then... When it's going to be ambiguous. So it's going to be like, uh, announce the... 3.0 and then uh, by Amishad and then like by Dr. Brasad and then like people ask the questions, right? It, because it is unable to capture the time, because of that, it is not able to answer like uh, time aware questions, like who is the current teacher of that course? So whenever we get a statement, we always <coughs> uh, take care of the temporal elements in that. Yeah, like, ideally, ideally. So the, actually, this this kind of um, this kind of knowledge representation, you can see it in almost like yeah. knowledge graph. So I have I this summer I just in did the internship at uh, Adrian Watson, and I got I got the access to the the deep QA, a project, the the code base and the database that we have. In the back in the um, in the back end, like on the foundation of their system. They use a knowledge base. They call it like like a knowledge graph. And the temporal aspect is one of their like uh, like challenging issues that they need to address. So they they ask me they see the kind of questions and ask me like uh, how do I capture it? See the kind of questions. 
And not only this, I think like even like Google Knowledge Graph or the, the later project uh, Google Bolt. So both of them like uh, extract the relationship from text. And um, um, the current version, the current like the current graph that they have, they they capture a very simple relationship, the subject to an object. And because the accuracy of those reports extracted from text is low, so they are still like working on improvement. But they, but because of the the nature of the data, right? So when we make any assertions, is is not like uh, universally true. We may believe that other people may not think in the same way. So it is important to capture all of the contextual information when you create one assertions. So any question about this this approach? Because uh, it's going to be used very frequently. So just imagine that like uh, when you build a knowledge graph, either you um, translate or convert the data from one format to another format, for example, like from from tables into the RDF graph, or if you extract the relationship from text, like. Uh, like anything, like if you go to the wiki page, right? You extract the fact and you represent it in the graph form. That that is like um, here we are not doing at that large scale, but we we'll give the example and see how do we represent it in the form of the graph. So that's the purpose of this uh, hands-on exercise. You just imagine that in one wiki page is gonna be a collection of the like, sentences like that to be represented in the form of audio. A lot of like there are many of many research problems still going on, but basically what the uh, um, the question the base the basic questions we're addressing here is given a sentence, how do we transform it in a graph by human and not not by by extraction methods? So uh, after this, I will have like a couple more questions like exercise for us to think like how do we represent it in the way that it can um, we can minimize the number of triples at the same time we can also uh, any kind be able to answer different kind of questions so do you have any other questions about this uh, the two approach replication and zero property Uh, so Are you able to see, think, and see visually? The answers. I think the you know key thing is to see both uh, of both the approaches visually, right? And then I get so the syntax. I still have problems with the uh, the, the yeah. usage of URIs. Yeah. Like, do I have to use uh, schema or just? Come up with my URIs or like. So the URI for what do you mean? Like for example, the previous homework it says uh, WSU uh, announces something, announces. Uh, oh, you. Or whatever. So do I have to actually go to Schema to talk and then look for a university and then define WSU as a university? Not for this thing here. Yeah. I, I mean, this is the first hands-on exercise I've yeah. ever done, so that's. that's no, see. As far as the assignment goes, right? I mean, you know, you're not given an existing database. In, in you know, so you just uh, come up with some URI that you want to use, right? Yeah. But but when in real world, when you're going to write any program, probably are going to deal with existing data, and there will be appropriate namespaces there, and then you'll be following those things. You're going to do them, unless you are giving existing data to play with. No. So for. For the URI, you can come up with any fancy name that you like. Uh, you know, put your your name on the URI is also fine. Mm -hmm. Create if you want to create a namespace under your you know. Yeah, because yesterday I was going for the schema of talk and looking for a university or a, or a college or whatever. It's not many that they yeah. go to post lab you know. It's it it can the URI can be anything as long as it's valid. Because the, after this exercise, then you need to put that into a validator and to, and you validate mm -hmm. those uh, triples. Mm -hmm. So 
ready for the next um, exercise. So I have another question. Yes. That is more like in another video, Dr. Seth was saying when there is a heart rest, mm. you do not have to treat it as a string. Mm. Otherwise, you lose its meaning. Mm. And yeah. then you cannot do the nearby yes. yeah. search. I just wanted a bit of explanation. Like, it's the whole yes. string. Black right? Yeah, I have a question on black note. Maybe your questions will be addressed to the other time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the address that you selected in the homework? Home yes. Oh, okay. So, um, say you have the address, the address of right there is 3642 or something? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's okay. So, let's say this is the number right and this is the street name and this is the uh, zip so let's say if you the basic question is that if you represent the whole the whole address as a string what do you lose in terms of semantics how like what kind of the if if it is interpreted by the machine, does it like let's say if I ask the questions, give me on the the list of university within this zip code or near this zip code? So I would lose the semantics because it doesn't know what is the zip code in here. Yeah. Or it say like um, give me the the street name of the right state and give me the the, the list of store near this university or on this street, it wouldn't be able to answer that such a question, right? It may, if you need to go dig into this and try to understand what each component means. So in, instead of like uh, giving it as a string, we put it as like different components with different meanings so that like you would just use it. Uh, if you had factory point all is not by factory trace and letter delta, then what should we do? Uh, I think if uh, I mean if something is multi value, mm. for example, factory point all uh, and another course, or we have two faculty members in our sentence. Oh, okay. So in that case, you need like collections. So it depends if it is like order. Let's say uh, if um, if um, is the list of is the order of the professors in, is important for your representation. If it is, then you can use the sequence. So, oh, if you don't care about the order, then you use the back, right? Or if you want to see that either Doctor Doctor Shed or Doctor Persak would teach the course, and then you use alternate. Uh, would you please also explain about alternate again because it was not uh, obvious in the video. So it says that like uh, one student at uh, right state, right? At one time, like that student can participate only one program, so either one of them, uh, like undergrad, master, or PhD. So then uh, we have all. We should use alternate. Yes. And uh, one of them. Yes. Participant. Yes. Let's say I have an example. Mm -hmm. Enzyme converts carbohydrate into sugar. 
then how do I represent it into triples? Uh, can you repeat that? Thanks, um, sugar. Enzyme converts carbohydrate into sugar. Then how do I represent this statement? Because they are just triples. It's like uh, I give something to you. Into sugar. It's like I gift something to you. Yeah. You need a third, a fourth element. You need a blank node. Hmm. So how do I represent it in triples? Yeah, you need a blank node. So if we just, if you, if you just uh, write the sentence like hmm. that, it's gonna be hard. But what if I, um, what if I change it a little bit? Let's say um, I would say this is convert mm -hmm. to sugar. Um, right. Yeah. But right. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you would know that the the main the main statement is like carbon is converted to sugar. That's the main one. And the agent yeah. did not work as the engine. So does it make sense to you? So which one is the subject and which one is the object? In, in this one, let's say, I would say, let's say, uh, this is the subject and This is an is converted, right? And I name it as number one. And I say that this is by um, some engine. So it has a, like um, this sentence is written by like human, right? Mm. So in the way that if we if we have like so you think of the triple as the subject, verb, and object. So basically it is a simple statement. So if you want to represent this, it is not it is not a simple statement because say that the object converts carbon to a sugar. In that case. This is gonna be the subject if we read if it is if this sentence is written by a human, and then this is the verb, and then in that case, uh, cap on to sugar. How do we represent it? But if we change the uh, tense of this sentence and say that cap on is converted to sugar by some engines. So by that, we can simply represent it in the adding form. But, but the process that we just did, right, it is not as simple as it is for the machine. So if you look at the um, annotators, like relationship annotators, you will see a lot of errors here. Like the precision is very low because it doesn't understand the one that like we understand. What about using blank node? Such a uh, enzymes convert X. X is sugar. Sorry, X is a type of carbon, and X becomes sugar. To the blank node. And then, like, it doesn't know that, like, you say. So when you say this carbon is con converted to sugar, right? And that is done by this engine. So, mm -hmm. what is the what is the main what it what is the what is the main uh, statement here? It says like, this is converted to sugar. If you if you put it as a blank node, it um, the semantics of that the re that kind of relationship the conversions is unclear. Isn't it? It is unclear. Unclear. Yeah. No, I think I what. So, so. No, it's, uh, yeah, I understand what you say, but I don't so understand why you don't So, let's say, yeah. let's say, uh, this convert, 
Let's set up an example. Try to I gift someone something to someone. Mm. It's easier. Right? I gift blank note. Blank note is a gift. Mm. Uh, blank blank note is given to someone. Mm. That's a blank note procedure. It works. So but in that case, uh, that is ambiguous. What? Something. We are not very clear. What? We are not specified. Here it is that it why you're not there. clear. Because the blank note could be used for other things as well in that case. Sure, I agree, but it's, it is uh, using also type. So. Then, then it's no longer a blank note. After? If any reason on it, it's not a blank note. Yeah. But when I'm stating it, it is. So I can represent a for statement. Um, here's the thing um, you have to tell machine. Yeah, something I, that the blank note that you are creating is associated with only that statement. What if I create other blank note somewhere else and try to associate it with something else? You know that that kind of ambiguity may be there. So so let's go in general with blank notes. Yeah, I mean so so what you can do is you may type your blank note, but that way it doesn't remain a blank note. I mean it remains a specific Special note. Right. It becomes a special note. I, I agree. Yeah, I, and that way it could work. I, I, I agree. Okay, that, yeah, yeah, because I, I agree that is a, there is an ambiguity, but the ambiguity is in black notes, not, not in how oh, I'm using black notes now. Right? The, since they are black notes, they, yeah. they are tough for reasoners. Yeah. But if you remove the reasoning, I, I, I know that's um, tough. Even if you don't do reasoning even if you do simple queries then also uh, your machine query. will find it ambiguous so. yeah I'm thinking about the query after we that's probably probably right good query so even while representing it so what you can do is you can specific use some specific And I think it would be, become something like this. Okay, this is so, 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 yeah, you can you do that, but that way your number of triples will increase. This way, number of triples will be lesser, and you will be able to represent a similar thing. So, so it's not that it doesn't work. It's mm -hmm. just that the number of triples you'll be having will be more than than the, the optimal. Mm -hmm. So. The key of that is uh, what do we want to re represent in this, right? We want to because the 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 verb, the main verb here is the con convert, right? Mm -hmm. So that means like this sentence is about a conversion. If you put it in like this, like it it really like it doesn't really represent that conversion. It just say that from something to something. But how do you let's say if you wanna if somebody if wants to say that, things, I have yeah. Problem. If uh, different enzymes convert carbon, carbon in different sugar, I have uh, problem. Yeah. Other problem, the problem is that you can associate one more thing to the same blank note, right? For yeah. example, carbon to sugar, or you can associate something else, so that becomes enzyme con converts carbon to something else also. If you bring in one more element into that, so that will become an ambiguous thing. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the relation is. Uh, Depends on the instance. That's the problem. Right. The BBD is related to the instance. I got it. So this is one example. I think this is a good example. Like for how do we represent the the complex relationship with any information? So anybody, anybody wanna make wanna try this? For the first sentence. Yeah, I got it. Uh, the knowledge base that extracts the fact 
from a Wiki. And then try the second example and you will see the problems. So if you finish the first one, go for the second. And then like uh, during that process, you will see how you see the issues and how do you adjust your solution. Same, I can change the nodes in nodes too. Okay. It is the same with Bush. Uh, the sprite. Do you, you want to write your name? So, what about the political? Uh, one of them. Oh, you So we can't do what about the their political position? Oh yeah, I, I, their political position. Okay. So you want all the statements? That's what you should do, right? As like well. all the, the representation. Yeah. Okay. I agree. So, so you can say something like uh, U.S. president. Anybody want to subclass, write sub yes prop, right here? subclass of political position? I agree with PP, okay, and PP is subclass, is a type, sorry. Earlier type. Earlier as class. And oats one is uh, RDF type property. No, sorry, it's not RDF type. It's subclass of. No. Uh, oats one is uh, sub property of RDF property. I'm confused with that one. It's not an instance of RDF property, so it's subclass. Yeah, he asked me to, to be. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> so, <old. laughs> <laughs> so up to here, it's okay. Yeah. I, I captured all the semantics. Because we, we haven't, we haven't uh, no. the Yeah, analysis. but we didn't okay. capture the semantic that the position, a political position, is the US president. Yeah, and just for statements. I, I, I can't say that US president is a political position. No, but the holds one you can address the political position. Right? Yeah, actually to be precise. I'm not sure about the, the how to define the type of of uh, holds one and that the one I'm confused to, but you can say that for sure. Holds one FDFS range and FDFS domain. This is a political position. And this is person. A maybe politician. Yeah, to be general. Yeah. But and I'm not sure about the uh, RDF type of old one. I'm not sure about this. That's confused me a bit because in this way, I miss this is an instance. I see right here. There's a single problem. Oh, with SP yeah. is a, a subclass. Oh, okay, I got it now. So SP 
is a sub property of LDF type. Yeah, singleton property. Okay, is this? Uh, we say no. It is a singular property of SD. So forget about this, and that SD yeah, is singular yeah. property of the word. Yeah. Right there, SD. Yeah, it's pure yeah. singular property. Right, so that seems really what part I wrote it here and confused. Yeah, here I guess I'm super confused. Forget about no, don't need for. I read the paper. Yeah. <laughs> I read the paper. Yeah. Huh? So, so. This is know. so. This is the what. This is the representation that Yago choose to present in their data set. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Exactly. It is. Yeah. You want to use edification? So you know how to you you know how to represent it in the replication, right? Mm -hmm. Like you declare. So instead of this one, yes. like you declare one uh, subject predicate an object and say the from and to. Is like uh, how it's one. The uh, 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 So, like in the meantime, one question is to discuss here is like when they say U.S. president is a compound noun, right? Should we split it into like uh, like using a single noun here instead of like, let's say can we just say president and we put the U.S. somewhere else say that that is the location of the statement where it forms right so in that case so this is the limitation of the Yago 2s so when it represented as a U.S. president and then like if you wanna something like give me the list of presidents in the world then it will be able to list right or give me all of the um, uh, like, uh, political positions in the US so if you put, if you say US president it doesn't distinguish the location or the position it's just US president and whatever questions you're asking, it involves U.S. president only. So if you split that, like one is U.S., one is president, it will be able, like you will be able to answer like more questions in a finer, grand manner. So, so let's basically say, you have to think about the query when you think about the model. Yes. So it's like when you represent it, you think about like uh, like the range of questions that it can answer. So let's say. If you want to represent it as a president and put the U.S. in another location, like the location into another property, so how can you do that? Is a country, right? A country is that, right? Yeah, it's just like typing that in. Ex XSD, okay. Yes, it's a country. Yeah. A country is a, is a XSL, XSL property or not? Yeah, I think it, it can be like just typing that. Is okay. Like so if you look at, can you read this uh, example? This, this um, representation, like uh, from. Yeah, from US president is ordered by Barack Obama. And then yeah. we have timelines. Uh, I have timeline and from 2008 till 2016. Okay. So anybody like uh, see any issues with this? Are you okay with this? Uh, again, the U.S. president thing will be and the U.S. Right? Uh, yes, that would be one kind of issues with that one. Okay. okay. Any other opinion? So what if the time period increased? So like. If we have taken some gap and we came back to the the attributes will be increased, right? In yes. Case. Yes. And the other issue is that with passive properties, I also have to think carefully when I have to create the model. So. Anytime. 
So if you look at the example, right? So from there, so if we, um, let's say who who came back? I think like yeah, Bill, Bill Clinton. He was the uh, he he was uh, he was senator at two different states at two different times. So that would that would reflect your uh, questions. If he comes back like at another time for the or maybe same or same or maybe different positions. So in that case, this timeline, right? How do you represent it? In that case, it's gonna be like another timeline, timeline, and then like that will be like how do you dis distinguish the period, right? So let's say you have another example like um, U.S. Uh, president is uh, by like um, George Bush, and at the timeline is 2000, 2008. So the same timeline, this instance is gonna be tied to four different, and then it will be uh, it will be ambiguous. How do we distinguish like who is in which period? Uh, the question is. The add property, how you attach the, the other typo? I mean, you have a typo here, right? Yeah. It is the subject, object, and it's like property and object. The add, it can be seen as a property too, right? Yeah, it can be a property. Okay, I mean, in this, see, if, we, if I think that nodes are subject or object and arrows are property, yeah. it's a property. What, what is the, the domain of this property? Because I got this, actually, it sounds possible for me, it's a good model anyway. But this I don't see the model like this can be like happen at some timeline, right? Yeah. So yeah, like this statement happens sometimes. Or okay. this tribal. This uh, statement. So you need such a way to represent all the statement as in the So it seems like that's what it says this is number one. This number oh one. it's number one, okay. Number one. Like so so you, you see the issues with this, right? Let's say yeah. like if we want to represent another period, and then here this timeline variable, like instance, it is connected to like a from yeah, and two, and yeah. then like when we want to interpret or we want to want to when we want to answer like uh, the the uh, the time period for Barack Obama, and then like which from and which two you gotta get. So because is ambiguous in that sense. Okay. This, this question, what about the verification? Yeah. I did statement one, mm. is valid from, is valid to, yes. and, the yes. period, and this is verification of statement one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you can choose, so um, for, for the, I think I have a couple more examples which we don't have enough time. So when, when, and we have to go because you have a class of now, basically. So, so what is the ideal way? See, if, if you see this one now, we are increasing the number of triplets, right? So, if you, if you have to say what is the ideal way to do it for one, the one particular example. So, when you see, uh, when you see, like, what is the ideal solution, right? So, it depends on, like, uh, what do you need in your application. Mm -hmm. So, when you need the scalability, right? Let's say here, like, for education, you need, like, uh, four, four people. And for the other one, you need two. So if you if you want to um, let's say if you have if you have just one or two triples, not a problem. But think of like very big data set with billion triples. Yeah. One billion versus two billions is like a difference, right? Uh, do you want to continue this next class or you can? So like, do you have any other questions about this? Because uh, all the other examples included that similar. Can, can you show us? Uh, where did you get this from the yeah, so we, do, we don't have time for yeah. that. You can ask later on. Just some, some people have leave, or just the final comments I will make. So um, uh, please, uh, you know, uh, create study circle if things are not clear. You know, meet in a group and uh, uh, do the um, exercise. Uh, you can do it together and study it and do assignment, of course, alone. Uh, Make sure you also review the schema.org material because we can, as soon as this is done, I don't know whether you're going to continue this class or are you going to do assignment. We'll send you a note, but 
next class will be next topic will be schema dot org. So make sure that you're uh, again up on that. Um, we need to uh, is surprisingly we have to start thinking about uh, projects now. Start thinking about it now. So while you are just at the very early phase of you know capturing and you know a lot of interesting uh, hopefully interesting knowledge. Um, the largest, most important component in the class, and where you're going to prove your mentor, where you're going to show you learn something, is to do a project. And we need, uh, you know, we want um, potentially creativity in the definition of the project. You should be uh, involved in designing your project. Some of the times you can, if you want, you can come up with a topic all your own, your own, and create your own team, and ex you know, uh, and, and, and come to me, and then we'll see whether that makes sense. Other options, other safer option, maybe. That you start meeting uh, other people in the lab, find that already exists, uh, offer, see if that excites you, and then offer, ask them what can you do, uh, and uh, see if you can be part of that project. You're welcome to do that, you're not required to do that. So uh, you go to um, Noesis web page or uh, the Facebook page or my own page, the list of all the projects there. Um, and uh, links to where I, you know a lot of things that are happening. Look them up. Uh, make uh, you know look at any existing or senior student, and see if you can find something there. Uh, or define yourself, your choice. But start thinking about it now. Even if you start thinking about it now, it will take at least another two three weeks before you will be able to write one page description on what you're going to do. So uh, I would like you to start thinking about it sooner. Um, typical class for if you join an existing project then it can be just one of you joining an existing project which have another three four people already if you are going to define a new project typically uh, the typical team size will be three persons it can be less it can be more but um, typical will be three persons uh, and then uh, we'll guide you through the whole process of defining the project um, uh, scoping it getting the data deciding on the algorithm Deciding the test cases and use cases, uh, demonstration, technologies, implementation, all the things that goes into doing something. It should be broadly within the scope of what this class is about. You can also go through, um, um, you know, the book, uh, you know, the class reference book and uh, see, there are, oh, I like sense surfing, or I like social data thing, I like uh, enterprise data thing, I like something else. Uh, there's some, many of them have examples. You can look at that. Or if we had students in the past saying, oh, I'm interested in this healthcare problem because somebody in my family has you know, suffered through that and maybe they're motivated to do that kind of session. Come up with something here. But you have to start thinking on your own. So it's going to be demanding. Also, another important thing is that uh, this may not be the only class you're taking. Um, so you cannot afford to delay your project work towards the end because you're going to compete with the exams and other things with the other projects. So, this one, you have to pace, and the idea is to you know work very hard now so that you don't have to work too hard in the those end and get bad grades, right? So that's something. And you can always you know catch me and say I this idea, what do you think, or I want to work on this, who do I draw? Or you can ask any of the guys who might be already in the you, know, you go into those rooms, 